and those that are supposed to vote for this bill for the next year, you all are pleased and it's okay with that. What are they smoking? You cannot come and tell Said. Well, hear this now. Said, mass mandatory. Here we go. They come to an end. And then you come and tell me, here we go on Said. If you go to the supermarket, the grocery, or the malls, you have to wear your mask. Said, if you go in a pharmacy, you have to wear your mask. Said, if you're traveling, you have to wear your mask. If you're in the transportation hub, you have to wear your mask. If you go to the church side, you have to wear your mask. If you're in the school side, you wear your mask. If you go to a barber salon, you go to the theater, you wear your mask. Which dumb dumb in Trinidad and Tobago will go in a theater and buy a popcorn and a juice and sit down and wear a mask? Thanks! If every councillor goes through their constituency, do video clips like this and send it for us, I'm going to be so happy. Dress the plate on our program on a Wednesday night. You know why I would be happy? I will be filled with joy in my heart. <laughs> you know why? Because the counselor is getting off their butts and they are actually going and doing some live video shoots. Real Talk took the initiative to find out suppliers of wheat in the world. A national flower mill could go to. So now Romano is saying the company is not going to raise any price in the near future. Why? Why? Is it because the S boss and they realize now that hey, it is in the public domain that we could go right Mexico and buy flour and um, wheat? We could go right China and buy wheat? I am about change. And thus far, Real Talk is very effective in Trinidad and Tobago coming towards making changes for the citizens. Public Utility Minister Marvin Gonzalez have urged the population to appreciate and be grateful for the availability of the utilities. This, as Gonzalez recalled, time in his life when he had to fetch water using a bucket from a nearby river. Gonzalez, I want you to understand something. I want you, Mr. Gonzalez, to understand something. You are being paid thousands of dollars by public utility, by the finance ministry. To govern Wasa. To govern Wasa. I want you to understand that you ain't going in no office for no free call. You are being paid. Do not tell me that I, Saeed, have to be grateful for the water I get it. Let me tell you something, Gonzalez. Every four months, I have to pay $400 and I get water once a bloody a month. So don't come on a media briefing and say, Said, you have to be contented, you have to be happy. Marvin, the next best thing for you to do is to resign and get the hell out of here.
and gentlemen, welcome to Real Talk with Said Ali. I am your host, Said. We do want to thank you for joining us tonight, viewers. Remember, we are live on Synergy Network Monday to Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. with a rerun the next day from 11 to 30 a.m. to 12 to 30 p.m. Remember that, viewers. So if it's one thing we always do every night, viewers, on our live program, is encourage you to share our live stream. Our live stream is important to us, viewers, and it should be important to you also. Now, it's the only way during the course of the night or the day, you can view Real Talk with Said Ali. Now, when our live stream go live, what I want you to do is share it. Send a message to your friends, to your family, a WhatsApp message, a 50 cent message, a, a message on Facebook. Hey, Said going live, we're sharing it. We need a lot to share the, the, the page also. So, viewers, that is all I'm asking you to do. Just share our live stream on Facebook and YouTube. Also, just a reminder, Real Talk Finance is offering you 4% on fixed deposit. Now, you have to sign a five-year contract in order to get 4%. In signing a five-year contract at 4%, you will get your cash up front. Cash meaning you will get your interest up front. Instead of waiting for five years <clears throat> to collect your interest at the end of five years, you're going to get it up front. So this is something that Real Talk, um, Real Talk Finance have introduced to Trinidad and Tobago. Like I said, I said I'm here to change the way banking operate in Trinidad and Tobago, and I have started with a fixed deposit. With the fixed deposit account viewers. So contact our office. Our numbers are on screen viewers. Four numbers to contact the office. Set up an appointment. We are located at number 14, Carolyn Savannah Road in Shogunas. We are pretty building. So viewers, in a little while, you're going to see a picture of our building on number 14, Carolyn Savannah Road in Shogunas. You can't miss it. Now, thus far, we are the only financial institution in Trinidad and Tobago that is giving you cash up front. Remember that. Once you sign on to our 4% five years contract, you're getting your cash up front. Why wait for five years or ten years when you can get your cash up front? Remember that, viewers. Remember that. Also, those of you who have spiritual problems, you can contact the same numbers, viewers, and set up an appointment. So, viewers, we are located. We are located at number 14, Karen. 14 Karen Savannah Road in Shogunas. Remember, you cannot miss our building. You can't. It's a three story glass front building with tiles in front. You saw it just now. So, as we start our program tonight, the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, has made 19 official visits between September 20th, 20, 2022 and February 29, 2024, at a total cost of $10 million. $10,652,878 dollars inclusive of flight insurance. This was stated in a written reply to an opposition request or question. To the Prime Minister about the number of times he traveled overseas on official business. The reply was circulated in Parliament, also requested as the cost of each trip, inclusive of hotel accommodation, meals, ground transport for the Prime Minister and his entourage, and any other related costs incurred. The reply stated that the PM, during the past three years, has honored his commitment as an elected representative of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Rowley attended several meetings with CARICOM and other world leaders to continue to foster good relationships with our allies through representation and partnership. It stated that other related costs incurred include the payment of flight insurance by the Ministry of Finance and the payment for one return, air 
travel ticket by Caribbean airline. Actual expenditure ranging from a maximum of 1.2 million for a trip for a strategies energy briefing session with Proman in Switzerland and meetings with BP in London and Shell Oil Company in Amsterdam. $1.2 million for a trip. Trinidad and Tobago, $1.2 million for a trip. For a strategies energy briefing session with Proman in Switzerland and a meeting with BP in London and a Shell Oil Company in Amsterdam. What came out of that? Could the opposition ask the Prime Minister what the country benefited from this $1.2 million trip? Hmm? Could Dr. Keith Rowley tell Trinidad and Tobago what was the benefit of this $1.2 million trip? Like I say, viewers, as long as the money is not yours and you have access to it, you will spend it. As you freely will. Just imagine that, eh? $1.2 million for a trip. And it's a brief trip. Hmm. I'm good, yes? The central bank is standing by the integrity of its polymer note saying they work well. At the same time, the bank is seeking to assure the public that both 2019 $100 note and a new $100 note to be issued in December this year will circulate simultaneously. Speaking on the matter, senior manager Wendy stated that it will not be a brand new note but will be an upgrade of the 2019 note series featuring a new security strip listen to this um so ever so often the banknote industry is one in which we operate the banknote industry just like any other industry utilizes technology and ever so often there are developments in technology in the banknote industry. So you would find that central banks like ours that issue currency or banknote printers, every five to eight years, we take a look at what new technology is available um, and decide, make a decision as to whether or not we would want to incorporate the new te technology that banknotes have developed over the, the period. So in this case, it is just an upgrade of our 2019 banknote series, our $100. Um, so the look and feel of the note will remain more or less the same. It is not a brand new note, but what we are going to do is to incorporate some new technology, which would be a security strip on the note that would provide additional security to the $100. Also, she stated that there was no requirement for a person to go rushing to return all bills. She added that the new bills will co-circulate with the old 2019 series. Listen to this. Oh, no. <laughs> so the, the notes will co-circulate? Yes. The new notes will co-circulate with the, the 2019 series. So there will be no need to turn in or redeem the old notes. They would continue to be legal tender and they can be used alongside the new notes. Now viewers, now viewers. When we got the new notes on them, the new notes, the government said that nobody cannot counterfeit the new notes. $78.77 million spent. And the words from the government said nobody cannot counterfeit this note. 
not too long after in circulation were counterfeit notes of the same hundred dollar bill the new polymer notes counterfeit nobody couldn't or nobody can't as the government would say but what happened not long after circulation of counterfeit notes hundred dollar note the polymer note was circulating in Trinidad and Tobago. Caller, good night. <clears throat> yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello, yeah. Go right there. Listen to me on your telephone, not, 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 the, not the um television. Yeah. Go right ahead. Go ahead. Take a the click. Meanwhile, manager of bank... Banking operation Leslie Ann Figaro believes that the polymer note worked very well and benefits of this would have been the durability and the confidence in the note. We, we believe the polymer notes have worked very well. So some of the benefits regarding polymer would have been durability, security, confidence in the notes and we are satisfied based on what we see based on our interaction with the commercial banks and processing of these bank notes we are satisfied that the notes have lived up to what we expected the polymer suite of notes to do yeah now to the Rancho Ego. all the notes work very well you know all the notes work very well all but how much is it going to cost now to bring this new note on stream? That is going to co-mix with the existing $100 bill we have. How much is it going to cost Central Bank? Can the Minister of Finance give us some details? Because it's taxpayers' money that is being spent. Let me tell you something. In Trinidad and Tobago presently, we have use of taxpaying citizen dollars right now for instance the road for instance street lights for instance schools for instance hospitals for instance cave land landslide water well good night good night good night side so right this government that we have here and the opposition these people don't need to come out of office because we see rural monilal we see he's standing up now and he's talking and saying things that Kamna should be saying. Kamna need to get your kid out of there and let them have an eternal election and let somebody take over that party, the UNC, or else they're not going to go back in power. And this Rowley and his government will continue to polarize this nation and we will have no say. I am a UNC senator, a ULF, and I'm not going to vote for Kamna or vote for UN UNC if Kamna still remains there. She lets you say, see, Pari and Keshi Mangus. And, and, and leave this party have election, the eternal election. They are capable men in this in the UNC who can take over the party and put this PNM government out of office. And if she remains there, she don't want to move. It comes in like a dictatorship we under. And we don't want to be under no dictatorship because I live in Black Sunday and we have a lot of problems of crime in the country. They come in the church and take my pulpit. They can't put nothing they taking it up. And we cannot get no help. We need to realize Rowley need to come out from there and come now also. We see UNC half people that can take over the post. Yes. We have uh, Monilal, we have Paré, we mm -hmm. have uh, Gravy Griffith, we have people who can fight Rowley. Rowley don't fight Kamla. He said, play to see three elections, he cut his skin and he will beat she again. Let she come out of there or they are not voting UNC at all. Definitely. Thank you, my friend. Now, viewers, well, listen to this. The government said that no one in Trinidad and Tobago would have been able to counterfeit the new polymer note. How many of you remember those statements? How many of you? Somebody, here what I want to tell you to do. Call in 238-6716. Our phone number is on screen. Call in the number and tell me if you remember this. Keep in mind. The government said nobody cannot counterfeit the new polymer note. Eh? They said that. Eh? 
Now, here is also amid social media claims warning persons of counterfeit polymer notes. The senior manager said no note is completely foolproof. I'm going to take a good listen. The thing about it is we do not have a counterfeiting problem. However, I will say that um, in the banknote industry, counterfeiting is, is an inherent risk. So just as when you have, for example, an automobile industry, accidents are an inherent risk, and they put things in place, seat belts, airbags, to mitigate against that risk. Um, in the banknote industry, counterfeiting is an inherent risk. So whilst we do have counterfeiting, it is not unusual. It is, uh, we are not above standards in terms of, uh, of countries ac across the globe. Um, as a matter of fact, we do have a, a couple cases which are before the courts, but it is not a major problem that we have. Can I hear that now? So when you hear the government could stand up and spend $78.77 million to change the note and come in to tell the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago that nobody cannot counterfeit the new $100 bill. Let me tell you something. We have seen on social media people complaining of getting counterfeit notes. Hundred dollars polymer note. Now they also said that there will be no changes to the lower denomination at this time. So the rest of the note, the one hundred, the one dollar note, the five dollars note, the ten dollars note, the twenty dollars note, the fifty dollars note will remain the same. The only thing they are doing is that they are adding another security features to the twenty nineteen hundred dollar bill. I believe it's the polymer note. Imagine that. How much is this going to cost? Central Bank, Trinidad and Tobago citizen needs to know how much it is going to cost. How much is it going to cost? So viewers, we are going for a short commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to hear about a dairy owner threatening to sue the state over forex access after this. Life throws you a curveball, and you need a clear path forward. Trust Real Talk Wrecking Service to get you back on track. Whether you're stuck on the roadside or dealing with an unexpected breakdown, our 24/7 wrecking service is just one call away. Fast response, reliable towing, and a team that's got your back. At Real Talk Wrecking Service, we don't just tow. We rescue. Real Talk Wrecking Service. Your lifeline on the road to recovery. Hmm. Tired of wasting precious time at the bank applying for a loan? Only to be denied? We understand your frustration. Here at Real Talk Report Companies, we take a different approach. Contact Saeed, Managing Director of Real Talk Report Companies and Licensed Moneylender at 238-6716-242-7690 or 339-1670. Feel free to visit our office at number 14 Karani Savannah Road, Chagones or number 132 Supera Road, Victoria Village, San Fernando. Do you have a public concern you would like to highlight? You can email your pictures and videos to realpublicconcerns at gmail.com and we will highlight your concerns on our show for Public Concerns Wednesday. Real Talk viewers. Now remember viewers, we are Real Talk Finance. We have a special offer for you on fixed deposit. When you open a fixed deposit with our company, 
at 4% for five years, you're getting your five years interest up front. So you don't have to wait five years for a fixed deposit interest. You're getting your 4% up front. So if you invest $100,000 with us for five years, viewers, at 4% interest rate, you're collecting your 20000 up front. Up front. Keep that in mind. We are the only financial institution in Trinidad and Tobago is doing that. Like I said, I am going to change you with banking functions in Trinidad. And watch me do it. Watch me do it. So, contact our office viewers. Contact our office viewers. Set up an appointment. Set up an appointment. We are located at number 14, Carrying Savannah Road in Sugarners. Work with your documents and set up your account. Remember, viewers, you can also open a savings account, a fixed deposit account, a shares account at Realtor Credit Union. Remember that, viewers, we are licensed to do business in Trinidad and Tobago. And just now, Real Talk, we're going to be in Guyana, in Grenada, in Barbados, as I am already making property. Just like I said, Real Talk Finance is in Guyana. We spread in. We spread in. Real Talk Credit Union is the only credit union in Trinidad and Tobago. It's going to be up the Caribbean. Up the Caribbean. I can guarantee you that. Because I have already stepped foot in the finance industry outside of Trinidad and Tobago. Let me tell you something. I, Said Ali is a name that is trusted in household in Trinidad and Tobago. Trust me. It is a name that everyone knows. Everyone. Remember, I'm also a licensed money lender. So if you're looking for cash borrow, I'm going to tell you something. If, you, if, if the bank blank here, yeah, come and check me. Come and check me. There are little rules and regulations, but once you pass it, once you have your criteria and you match it, trust me, you're getting cash. Call a good night. Good night, Mr. Said. Go right Great ahead, my friend. As usual. Thank you. Mr. Said, you, you you have been doing such a great job for this country, eh? bringing the information to the citizens of this country so they will think clearly and develop themselves with knowledge. You know it's only bubble corruption and underhand dealing. So that uh, currency that uh, they're going to add fiti on and so on, mm -hmm. bubble and corruption and, you know, whatever and whatever. But anyway, I want to congratulate you and compliment you for your pre-eed. Uh, program that you had uh, with reference to the, the license office and ticketing and things. I have and some I more stuff you, coming up for you, man. Has such a great impact on this nation, including license officers, police officers, mm -hmm. and the man they call Batson, Sergeant Batson, SRP Sergeant Batson, the traffic management coordinator, yes, yes. who is enforcing that the, the, these laws so that he is the owner. He must make it clear, tell the citizen of this country who is the owner of logistics and training. And when your driving permit is suspended, you have to go by him and do a six, six weeks training program before you get back your, your driving permit. How much That's is it going to gonna cost to get back? What's that? How much is it going to cost to get back? Six thousand dollars. Tell the public that. Yeah, the public, the public, the public not aware, they're not proactive, and God bless you to provide this platform. That's the greatest gift as a Muslim you could give to this country, you know, this platform, and your Tuesday night program, your pre-eat program, and I, you have them backing your side. Yesterday yes. had the police trying to defend it with Batson on the program yesterday on another station. Today you had the transport commissioner I'm on, telling you, on you another program. <laughs> You hear what I tell you? You had them backing and defending. Yes. And we must not stop it. And to the transport commissioner and police officers, Mr. Said, they must stop advantaging their fellow citizens of this country. You all have to live and get along. Your children have to go to interviews by some of these people. All the ticket, they will not get work, you know, when they find out you, the, 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 the father is a license officer or police officer who ticking them unnecessarily, you know. So, all your tra transport commissioner, all your work, Ha, your men does work very hard. We have to pay this um this president, former president May Weeks bill until she die, you know. And look at the salary all you get in. So all wake right. up and stop ticketing all your
your fellow citizens and advantage your fellow citizens. Thank you, Mr. Sai. Keep up the great work and we must not let this topic die. I have God bless you. I have some news for all you just after this story, but nevertheless, a local beverage manufacturer manufacturer has threatened to sue the state over its inability to access foreign exchange to purchase environmental friendly packaging for a new water product it has seeking to launch. Mr. Ramsaran, everybody knows Ramsaran Peanut Punch in Trinidad and Tobago, correct Navin? Everybody knows about Ramsaran. Now, founder and owner of Ramsaran Dairy Product made a legal threat in a pre-action protocol letter sent by his lawyer, Richard Jagasa, to the office of the Attorney General. According to a correspondent in 2017, the company sought approval to import paper-based cartoon for its new product. While it was granted approval for the importation of the necessary packaging equipment, it had issues with accessing foreign exchange to purchase and import the packages. His lawyer stated that after his client's requests were denied, Ramsaran's appeal to the finance minister Colin Mimbud who declined to reconsider. But Mimbud, I thought you said all manufacturers getting access to US currency to import. To import. So how come you end up turning down Ramsaran who is a family name in Trinidad and Tobago with Ramsaran peanut butter? How could you turn down a household name? How could you turn down a company that has a household name in Trinidad? Uh huh? Like somebody else, he, call it like somebody else decided to get his money that he was supposed to get? I don't know why I'm asking a question. Because the Exim Bank is supposed to provide. Yeah, if all I didn't know, I'm telling all you, the Exim Bank in Trinidad and Tobago supposed to provide manufacturers with U.S. currency to import. All I do like all you know. Well, let me tell you something. Thank God all you know, because tonight news on Real Talk is going to blow your mind off. The Exim Bank in Trinidad and Tobago that Kong and Bolt and his team set up was to give manufacturers U.S. currency. Or oh, let me say it in a better term. The Exim Bank that the government set up in Trinidad and Tobago, they set it up with the intention so manufacturers could access U.S. currency to import product for their company or raw material to their company to help the Trinidad and Tobago. Or even to export back their product that they create in Trinidad. Well, they didn't know that. So how come now Colin Mimbert could decline to reconsider a manufacturing company access to U.S. currency to import product from outside Trinidad? Colin, Clang, Mimbert, you're on the spot tonight. Now Ramsar and he noted that in March, no. Not Ramsar and his lawyer. His lawyer noted that in March his client made a request for disclosure of information related to this country's foreign exchange allocation policy. And after the deadline expired earlier this month, an official request an official requested a month extension. The AG office was given 14 days to respond before Ramsaran files a constitutional claim over the issue. The man have rights. The man have rights. He's a manufacturing company in Trinidad. And he was denied U.S. currency. Things getting bad? Trust me, things done bad. It ain't getting it done. I am a businessman in Trinidad and Tobago. And when they go to the bank, I can't get more than 300 U.S. At the rate of 677, 678. 
outside now i had to pay 750 for a us dollar to conduct my business and i will blast them anytime anytime call her good night good night Said. you're live go right ahead right call him from tuna puna welcome to napuna now Said, let me get into some uh, main concern the commissioner of transport you have a matter to deal with and your bricks in with the transfer of that vehicle with Faris al Rawi, <laughs> when it is that he personally has to go and do other transactions, but he comes in the light of the population and tell them that um, he sent somebody to do it on his behalf. And the rules and regulations, the law is you can't send somebody to do a transaction of that nature. You understand? Why the Commissioner of Trans Transport Commission will charge him? Huh? You see how it is because why he was there then attorney general. Mm -hmm. But this is to show you where Clark or what is his name. These people and all of them are PNMI. Now, Sai, let me tell you something. This whole thing with the foreign exchange, um, it was designed, the, the export and import bank, the exim bank, was the bank so designed because the commercial bank would get foreign exchange to dispense to the customers that they won't get in. So that's why people call, call members and them deliberately. They had a plan. This is a mafia connection no? to give the import and export by Exim Bank the foreign exchange to this to give uh, to the small business people, manufacturers and whatnot and thing. And you telling me and, and, and what is this? I just want a reference to you. Mm. Business firm like Pennywise and them who do manufacture nothing. They just import mm -hmm. and retail. But them getting foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. But this is a man, Ram Saran, who manufacturing a product Sorry. and selling Sorry. it outside to bring in foreign exchange to this country. Mm -hmm. And he can't get it, there's foreign exchange. That is, something had to be wrong. This and that. you know what thing? That they made a further thing to, um, to give um, Exim Bank an additional sum, I think it was a hundred million dollars more to distribute to the um the, the business sector. But I let me mention something to you. Do you you could remember that the, the PNM the Prime Minister said that the the government the PNM was owing the bank one of the bank four million dollars and they bankrupt and whatnot and thing? But yet still they went on to build this big monster monstrous building costing a few hundred million dollars. Where are they getting the money from to build that sorry Thank you, my and friend. they take no loan? Sorry, do you want me to get any money from? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we'll go, Dianic, Dianic. That's a big fan next day. So Trinidad and Tobago, we're going for a commercial break. But when we come back, I want to hear somehow, I want you to understand some of the issues that the Commissioner of Transport, Clive Clark, dealt with today. And there's a pressing issue that he is refusing to dealt with or to deal with. But tonight... We go deal with it for you all right here on television, and maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow it might seem back on um on on on, on the other stations making other comments. Call her good night. Good night, good night, my lord. Good night, good night. Good night. The premier, my question like hell, boy. The minister going mad now, boy. We real problem now. They don't like we at all again, my child. They like they don't like nobody look like. They can't come children go right back. But God be with you, my lord. Take care. Thank you, my friend. So we all leave it for a short commercial break. But we'll be right back after. When life throws you a curveball and you need a clear path forward, trust Real Talk Wrecking Service to get you back on track. Whether you're stuck on the roadside or dealing with an unexpected breakdown, our 24 7 wrecking service is just one call away. Fast response, reliable towing, and a team that's got your back. At Real Talk Wrecking Service, we don't just tow, we rescue. Real Talk Wrecking Service, your lifeline on the road to recovery. Hmm. Tired of wasting precious time at the bank applying for a loan? Or need to be denied? We understand your frustration. Here at Real Talk Report Companies, we take a different approach. Contact Said, Managing Director of Real Talk Report Companies and Licensed Money Lender at 238-6716-242-7690 or 339-1670. 
Feel free to visit our office at number 14 Carney Savannah Road, Chaguanas or number 132 Superior Road, Victoria Village, San Fernando. Do you have a public concern you would like to highlight? You can email your pictures and videos to realpublicconcerns at gmail.com and we will highlight your concerns on our show for Public Concerns Wednesday. So welcome back to Real Talk viewers. Remember, we are offering you 4% on fixed deposits, viewers. You're getting an interest up front. Interest on fixed deposit that is solid cash. You're getting it up front. So whatever financial institution, I'm going to tell you something. Did I say side mode? I don't cover, you know. But here it is. Whatever financial institution you have your fixed deposit in, and you had to wait 10 years to get $2,000. Oh, you had to wait 10 years to so get $3,000. Here we're going on. Go and break it. Go and break it. And break it by real talk. Break it and break it by real talk. Watch me, you're getting cash up front. Why are you waiting 10 years for? Why are you waiting 10 years? I told you all, from the time I got my license, I come to change the way banking operates in Trinidad and Tobago, you know. Jake White telling all you, we have some measures putting in place to come out for the public. But tell us something, we're different. We're banking different. A different. Transport Commissioner Clive Clark has stated that your vehicle window must have the following minimum level of visibility. Light transmitter. Now, Front windscreen, 70%. Windscreen anti-glare band, 35%. Each window or each front window include side wings, side window, 35%. Each rear window include side wing and a rear windscreen, 20%. Listen to this. Let me just, let me just put it this way, glad you asked me that. The law exists right now for tint of a vehicle. You know the, um, the, the, the back, the back windows to be that of 20%. The, the front windshield and the back windshield, the back windshield of 20%. The front, um, we have 70 VLT and also to the, um, the anti glare band of 35. Let me just say this though, the, the, and, the, and the front windows, that's where the driver sits and the passenger, that as well, sir, um, 35 um, PRT, visual light transmitters. Now viewers, however, he stated that someone who commits an offense in regards to tint will be given a summary offense and will be taken to court to deal with the issue. Clark added that the aspect of the law but issued a fixed penalty ticket is still being sorted out and hope that this will be passed as soon as possible. He also noted that as right now, officers cannot give anyone a ticket for tint, but can issue a summary offense. Listen to this. Currently, I need to say this on, on the air. Someone committed an offense with tint, currently it is it will be treated as a summary offense. It means we, we take you to court to deal with the matter. The aspect of the law where we where we ought to issue a fixed penalty ticket, they are still settling that um, within uh, within the within the um the, the AG office and the relevant authorities. And we are hoping that we could have that pass as soon as possible. So the point I am making here I am making it, gentlemen, is that as it is right now, we cannot stop someone on the road and give them a ticket for tint. However, the law exists where we could continue to give a summary offense. So you cannot, at this point in time, get a ticket for tint? 
No, and, 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 Clark said he has also instructed his officers, his licensed officers, to not make persons remove tint on the nation's road. Well, listen to this. Can, can, police, you know, can police or licensing officers order you to remove tint? Let me, do, uh, let me put this this way. Eh? In that if I want to, I want to actually, I want to answer you the context in the context of a licensing officer, right? The first thing in terms of making my decision, that tint has to be contrary to the motor vehicle and road traffic act. And actually, what 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 can happen is that once there's an issue of safety, and I want to put this in the context of that, once there's an issue with safety, and, and a licensing officer recognizes that that vehicle. Um, based on the fact that this vehicle is so darkly tinted, it could be an issue of safety. A licensed officer can issue what we call a calling notice to bring that vehicle into licensing and we can, we can, we can advise you to remove the tin based on a calling notice. So we, we can do that. Um, it is something, not something so much we practice. I have instructed my staff, I can tell you, I have instructed my staff to do not um, have persons remove the tent on the nation's road. One of the things you must be able to test that tent, you must be able to see whether that person has validated, whether that person has approval, yes or no. Your question specific to the to the, to the TTPS, let me answer you this way. The TTPS, as far as, as far as my knowledge, cannot issue a formal notice to a vehicle um, to, to, to visit licensing. They'll need a licensing officer to, to more or less issue issue such such notice. I do not, as again as transport commissioner, I do not encourage uh, removal action or to remove the tent on, on the nation. So now Trinidad and Tobago on the issue of the merit point system. Now this is ridiculous to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. You are issuing penalty tickets or you are issuing tickets with a fixed penalty and still giving us a demerit point. So when our 11 point is made up, you suspend our license and we still have to give the government. We still have to pay our ticket. Is that fair to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago? Now viewers, I want you to understand this. We have two parts of show on the... On, on, on the Good night. Good night. Yes, sir. Good night. Go right ahead. Said, concerning this whole issue with licensing office mm. and this tent and all them things, right? Let me ask you a question, right? In the DPP office and all the magistrates, the courthouse in Trinidad and Tobago saying that they overwork and they have too much of cases built up in the court system right now. Mm-hmm. And that is the cry that they had weeks and coming and coming and that is, that is the only thing they're saying. That yeah. they're overburdened with cases. So where the transport commission I want to go and do now, add everybody car who have the action and put them in court to overburden it more with more cases. courts. <laughs> Thank you, my no, friend. I, I, I understand what you're saying there. So put back up the time, the shots. So Trinidad and Tobago, a maxi driver. A maxi driver was served this spent almost a decade driving his own personal maxi took a loan from the bank bought a maxi still paying the loan he didn't build his house as yet but he's renting he have a wife to take care of and kids going to school now he was sent this by an email from the licensing office. Notice of disqualification and suspension of driver's permit 
by licensing authority. He was sent this. Now, the next page. Trinidad and Tobago. After you get your, dem your, your demerit points for your license of 11 points, and they suspend you, they have a driver, driver's rehabilitation program. A rehabilitation program. You get a ticket. Go back to the first shot. You get a ticket for a blow bulb. Or you get a ticket for a tire. Or you get a ticket for something that caused your points to build up to 11. Not reckless driving, you know. A blow bulb. A seatbelt again for the merit point. For the merit point. If you charge it for a seatbelt and a blow bulb and maybe a tire, you get 11 points one time. Let's just say that. Now, he got this ticket. And his driver's permit is going to be disqualified after he gave the government a fee. A penalty fee. Now Trinidad and Tobago. I want you to understand something. If you do not. If you do not. Surrender your permit. I believe one of these shots. Have the um. The, the, the $5,000 fee on the shot. I don't know if it's the first shot or the second shot. If you do not. Surrender your permit. You will be charged, I believe it's $5,000. I believe it's a second shot. Now, viewers, I want you to read the first line and the second line. Read it carefully. Please be advised that if you do not surrender the permit to the licensing authority after the expiration of the 14, they're giving you 14 days, eh? After time frame, you would have committed an offense, which has a fine of $5,000 and further disqualification for an additional period of one year. Come back to me. So Trinidad and Tobago, who is making money? I want to ask Clive Clark. I want to ask the Minister of Transport, Rohan Sinanan. Together with the Commissioner of License, Licensing Office, who is making money on the demerit point system? Who do we go to? Hmm? Who do we go to? As you heard, I call I said before, you have to pay six thousand dollars and go through a program to get back your license. Five thousand dollars for failing. After I get this email. You have 14 days in which to surrender your permit. If you fail, if you fail to surrender your permit, they add it on one year to your disqualified year. That. Who is making money? Who is making? Could Clive Clark tell Trinidad and Tobago? Who do we have to go by now? Other than licensing department to get back our license, who do we have to go by? Clive Clark, clear up that for the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Then we will understand who is making money, if it's the licensing department or an external entity. <clears throat> if it's an external entity, I want to know up front how many persons getting cut from that money. How much persons getting cut? Hola, come now, man. Hola, come now, man. Let me tell you something. Heads going and roll. Heads going and turn. You brought out a new system to disqualify me from, from driving through ticket, through the merit point, although I pay a penalty fee. And now you're going to tell me now I had to go buy an entity now to pay a set of money to get back my license. You're talking shit. You're talking nonsense. Hey, let me tell you something. Watch, man. Just now people go fly out for no reason, you know. Take what's telling all here, you know. So I want to ask Clive Clark now. Together with the Minister of, 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 of Works and Transport. Rohan Sinan. 
This maxi man, who took a loan to buy his maxi, who is renting, who has worked his maxi for the last 10 years. Who is going to provide bread for his family? Who is going to pay the loan for his family? Who is going to pay the rent for his family? Who is going to provide food on the table? Who is going to see about his children and who going to school? Clark, are you going to do that? Or he has to go by an external source now to pay one set of money to get back his permit. Or let come now, man. You see this? You see this nonsense that all you're encouraging? Let me tell you something. When I don't want to tell you on national television, Allah will bend all your head and walk the road. Because this, this way I now start, it ain't finish. It ain't finish. Hear this, Trina and Tobago. The day you hear, the day you hear that demerit point, suspend my license, Saeed. Let me tell you something. Rohan Sinara is going to court you now. If they have no representative, need a Clive Clark. Watch my soldiers. If they have no representative, going to re um, represent all you know. Because all you will tell the magistrate who gave all that stupid idea to bend on the poor man that work in taxi, that work in PH, that doing delivery, who driving company vehicle. What the police vehicle? What the police vehicle? All I want to talk nonsense. I'm ready for all you, you know, Clive. I'm ready. I could hire a driver, you know. I could hire a driver. But you see nonsense? You see stamping up on the poor citizen? You see that? We have a problem with that. We have a problem with that. Where the police vehicle? All I want to play. Watch me now, man. How many government vehicles in Trinidad and Tobago is not fit for the damn road? Is license officers in Trinidad and Tobago going to stop an ambulance? Are they going to stop a police vehicle? Are they going to stop a regiment vehicle? Are they going to stop WASA or TNT vehicle? Clive, you want to talk about tent? Tent is not an issue. Yes, Let me deal with the real issue here in Trinidad and Tobago. Look at a vehicle. That is a police vehicle. A police vehicle. Can we make all the number plates? Can we make all the number plates, Trinidad and Tobago? No. But you know what? Clive, you're better the poor citizen while the government vehicle unfit for the damn road. Unfit for the damn road. Show the next police vehicle without a sticker. Boy, watch me now, Clive. <laughs> watch me now, sweating in AC, you know. <laughs> Clive. You want to talk about things? Talk about the merit points. Talk about that taxi driver who worked in for 20 years on the road. His license going to be suspended. Why? Because a ball blew. Because a ball blew. Because he didn't have any seatbelt. Eh? Because the tire beat too low. Oh, let come on, man. I nonsense. Hey. So, let me just say this. There are very few people in Trinidad and Tobago could highlight issues for 90% of the citizens in our country. 90%. The government could walk over 90% of the people. But you see, Saeed, and dealing with the issues for the poor man on the streets, no, don't walk over that man. Because all you have money, I have money. All are driving Benz and BMW, I drive in Benz and BMW. All I could travel in plane and go around the world. All I only talk in one language. I travel in plane, I go all around the world, and I talk in six different languages. All you hold in position, I hold in position. I want to talk? All I want to clamp down on the citizens and them for no goddamn reason because somebody wants to make money on the side? No! Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Fear is fear. They will give a man a ticket. He go go and pay it. On a pawn paying that ticket now, he gets 40 merit points. So try to make a look at his police vehicle. 
For the license sticker. And this is a PDA vehicle, eh? A PDA. No license sticker. Clive Clark wants to talk about the cracking on license sticker. How many government vehicles in Trinidad and Tobago is not fit for the road? Clive, you and your damn team want to bring a watchman. You want a bully citizen? No, but I will light up on national television. You see that demerit point system? One way or the other. You see that? That kakaras kind of thing, whatever they say? Watch me. You see that? All are going to abolish that. And I side will show all you how all are going to abolish that. They're quite telling all you. I want to hear who is the people that run in the rehabilitation program. If it's somebody in life's office and how much they're charging or if it's an external entity. And that's where the back and I'll go start. They, I have close to go to court, you know. I have money to pay a lawyer, you know. Works and transport. The government will send a lawyer to represent Clive Clark. But I will pay a lawyer to represent me and the rest of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Clark, you see that demerit point system? That's going to be abolished. That's going to be abolished. Because I will tell you something. I, I, Said, all I ready to go to court? I ready to go to court. I ready. I will pay a lawyer to represent me. But the thing is, all I can is free from the state. You see that system? This maximum now have a loan to pay. Clive Clark paying it for him? Is licensing office paying it for him? Because of found stupid demerit points. System that I put in place. Per chance, if the bank sees this man Maxi, who responsible for it? Clive, you responsible for it? Rohan said they're not responsible for it. No, they're not responsible for it. The bank is responsible because the man can't pay his loan because his license got seized to the merit point. And on top of being seized now, he paid money to the government. He paid the ticket. Well, go ahead with all your nonsense. Go ahead with all your nonsense. See how far they're going to reach in Trinidad and Tobago. Let me tell you something. When this... One minute. When this issue starts to affect policemen who drive in their vehicle, when it starts to affect senior people, Clive, I hope all you, I hope all you have all the passport are ready to fly out of Trinidad and Tobago because when the back and start, I hope all you could deal with it, you know. Because I want to see how much time you will go to court to answer a demerit point case. They're quite telling you. Anytime, my <laughs> viewers, we out of time for tonight. But tomorrow, Thursday night, Thursday night, oh, la, la, you might see Clive Clark on our next TV station again. Um, tomorrow is a rerun of this program from 11 to 12 30. Beauty rerun, share our live stream. Until we meet again, good night.